Hey, everyone. It's Pastor Adam and Pastor Forrest here uh, to kind of check on you after uh, the first week of fasting and praying uh, during Amelia Baptist, 21 days of fasting and prayer uh, is over. So we have uh, one week down and two more weeks to go. And uh, we just wanted to kind of provide these small uh, little interactions, these videos, just to kind of uh, go over uh, the purpose and the reason for why we do something like this, just uh, for everybody who wasn't with us the first week, or if things might remain unclear, or um, even if there is just some speculation as to why we are deciding to do this or why we as leadership uh, really wanted our church to do this. Um, we just wanted to kind of help answer some of those questions or provide some thought, some food for thought, and also just to kind of check in and see um, how uh, Forrest and I are doing with this. Test. We talk about it sometimes throughout the week at the church, uh, at the office, but um, what's the big one? What's getting to you at this point? Yeah, like, what is uh, really driving your prayer life? They they can't see that you had to put makeup on your face because you look so haggard from this fast that you're being enduring. Oh yeah, I had fears <laughs> actually. Can I tell you? I had fears that I would show up on Sunday morning and everyone would kind of look really like, like, and see if I've lost any weight to see if I'm taking a fast seriously. Like, it's what does it mean when you've gained two pounds on the fast? It's <laughs> the fasting week, like you just overcompensated for your Snicker bars and you've eaten like. 70 pounds of vegetables and meat like all day you're not running you're not exercising still but. i know that this has been one of those things that you can uh you start seeing your own legalism you're like well yeah yeah i was talking with somebody the other day that was fasting from sun up to sundown and they were they were awake before the sun came up and there was like a donut there and they're like you know oh my <laughs> God. Like, like one of those technicalities yeah, exactly. Like, like how you'd meet somebody at Southern Seminary, like who had to sign a no drinking, no smoking clause, and then they'd wait for like the the last two days of their before, after their J term ended before they started summer classes, and they <laughs> went and took a tour of like the whiskey factories in Kentucky. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like that kind of legalism, <laughs> that kind of like, hey, it's, you know, I signed uh, it, but I'm not in class right now. So. Well, my daughter, first of all, offered to fast from schoolwork for 21 days wow. and then has since modified it to where um, it, it's a fast of the day. So one day it was I'm fasting from food because there's no or from meat because there's no meat on cheese pizza. Yeah. And then she discovered pigs in a blanket and decided that she now is fasting from fruit hmm. because there's no fruit in pigs in a blanket. So yeah, it's, it's just, a, just every day we get a new update. It's like the she's, she's yeah. just a she's just a perfect example of like a church today. <laughs> Just, I will fast this until I feel like not fasting for it. And then it's like, you know, but uh, what, what the church doesn't know is we just did this to get sermon illustrations. Well, the, that's, yeah, that's exactly. We just wanted along. to now our kids are taking it very seriously, like very yeah. seriously. But they, we've only had the we, we killed the TV like there's no TV. We have a Friday night movie night we instilled, but there's no TV at all throughout the days, um, which is a r real pain for my wife more than anybody because I'm not with them during the day. And sometimes putting a TV on for 20, 30 minutes can kind of help her run around and get what she needs to get done, done. But the kids have really grabbed onto it, which reminds us that, you know, kids adapt and it's really important for us not to, to kind of ex nay the idea before it even happens and just put it out there and really see if some of your family members are more passionate about it than you even realize they could be. So Stuff like this, I think, is testing. That's the key word. You're in. You're starting the second week, and you, you just need to hear and see reason. So, in your words, uh, Pastor Forrest, when you when you have people come up to you and kind of wonder why we're fasting, I know you've got asked that question a few times. Do you think they're coming at it with a Old Testament view in the sense that we fast only when bad things happen? So, is there something you and the church staff aren't telling us? If if we're if we're aiming this towards the the vision of the church and the, the the goal the discipleship of the church and you know you're ending this whole time with with unity, well then are we not unified right now? And I, I think those are good questions. I think those are good questions because of how fasting has been looked at over the years. Yeah. Oh yeah. I think and I think that's one of those things I maybe didn't understand fully was just how um, unity can be a scary word. If we um, if we're looking at it from this idea that, OK, we only need to do something like this if the wheels have come off the car, things are falling apart, like we need to get everything back together. And so the idea of like, well, if we're praying for unity, like, does that mean 
uh, you know, there's, there's a church split or there are people like, you know, got to pick at pastor Adam's office and um, just thinking through those things of like, no, that that's not at all what we're talking about. Um, and looking at it from, from that perspective of uh, the, the famous Benjamin Franklin quote, like uh, an ounce of prevention is worth a, a pound of cure, mm-hmm. right? That idea of why would we wait until there were problems in the church to do something like call everybody to do fasting and prayer and have a season of really intentional focus mm-hmm. on the spiritual disciplines. Yeah. Um, and so I think, you know, a lot of people either have never had any exposure to fasting mm-hmm. or the only exposure they've had is this idea of kind of sackcloth ashes. Woe is me fast. Um, yeah. And, and absolutely there's a place for that. Absolutely. There is. And uh, Lord willing, we'll never have to be there, but yeah. You know, I think so often we've treated it like that's the only time you should do it, as opposed to this. This is about all of us, um, you know, being a church family that truly loves one another and loves Jesus more at the end of this 21 days than we did at the beginning of the 21 days. And I agree. And I think people could be more known. I think biblically faithful churches could be more known for the spiritual disciplines. I think we put a lot of pressure and a lot of aim towards that first confession or a profession of faith in Jesus Christ. And much like we, we look at Roman Catholicism as if they pigeonholed confession, when confession is something that the entire church should be doing all the time, that's sort of almost how we, we become very reactionary with the spiritual disciplines. Um, and, and I think that there's not enough preparation and there's not enough living on guard oh, yeah. uh, as, as Christians. And that's, that could explain why so many of these things happen in our lives that absolutely surprise us. And we run anywhere else, but where we need to run uh, to bring solution in our life, to bring peace in our life, we don't run yeah. anywhere, but the Prince of peace to find this peace in our life. And so I think if we could say anything, it would be, this is a great reminder that the spiritual disciplines are given to us for preparation, not reaction to bad things. You don't start yeah. your marriage counseling when you're going through a divorce. I think that yeah. there is a way to water the garden before, you know, the fire here. And that's, that's kind of where our mentality I think needs to be. Yeah. I think, I think it's a natural reaction. We want to guard against a sense of workspace religion. Um, like when you think of, mm-hmm. you know, Catholicism, it's that, you know, grace plus works. And so we want to guard against that so much that I think what's happened is we've kind of thrown the baby out with the bathwater. And so instead of saying like, Hey, these are things that should be a regular part of your Christian life. Instead, we've, we've kind of relegated them to this, uh, a first aid kit that we sit over to the side. And it's like, yeah, the Bible tells us these things we're instructed to do them and how to do them, but we're not going to tell people they have to do them until everything's going wrong. You know, when we've got, when we're splurting blood, that's the time to go get the bandage and slap it on yeah. as opposed to, Hey, why are we not doing these things? Yeah, <laughs> we're exactly. We're right. a helmet. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's, and we can look just at the scriptures really. Cause I think that's where a lot of, first of all, I would like us to also <laughs> like us to say, no, there's not, you said it really well in the staff meeting the other day. No, there's not. There's this is one of the best times in Emily Baptist Church's history. This is one of the most encouraging times, not just because we have more people coming to our church than we ever have, but just because there's this, just a sense of peace and unity and multi generational relationship and service. And we have our problems because we're humans and we're all going to have our problems. And no, there are not a bunch of perfect lives in there. We all need the grace of God a lot. We need the Holy Spirit to just rain down in our church and to show himself through our obedience to the community. My goodness. Um, so, so no, this is not saying we're, we're excellent. There is no reason to fast. We do it for prep. There's of course things that are going to be reactionary for some and should be if they're going through something in their life that, that people go through. But I do want to say, no, there's no, there's been no cause for disunity. We're going through a big, um, opportunity with, with our land when it, and trying to get out of debt and, um, all of these things that that the God has put in our path to heal us and help us and um, create a wonderful future for our ministries um, that are growing. So all of these are wonderful, great things. And um, without saying everything's perfect, kids, it is not like we just said, man, we better hurry up and do a 21 day of prayer and fasting because this this house is on fire. <laughs> Lord, you need to fix this right now. No, this it was none of that. And, and certainly if anything was even close to that, the whole congregation would would know about it. No, this is not that. 
this is us looking at the scriptures and how the scriptures look at these spiritual disciplines um, all the way from Psalm 35, 13 to uh, even the book of Esther. Esther fasted when she was faced with danger. That was more of a knew it was coming fasted. But then you had um, a biblical way to humble ourselves given to us through the songs and a renewing of connection with God, uh, what, what Jesus tells the disciples to do in Mark 2.20, um, even empowering us to fulfill God's calling in our lives. Uh, so, so yes, most of the people in the Old Testament fasted in a crisis, but Jesus fasted for his calling. So we should not only fast during problems, but also for understanding our purpose. And this is not just a corporate fasting and prayer. This is an individual fasting and prayer. So not only are you used to be praying for how God's using you in this one and only life, but how God intends to use Millie Baptist Church and that we continue just to pray and walk in that in that will. And, I, and that's what Pastor Neil, I think, is going to be bringing to the pulpit uh, this Sunday, the understanding of prayer as we walk out Luke. Yeah, I, I think it's it really the reports we've heard back. There's been some really encouraging uh, mm-hmm. testimonies we've already heard of just couples who are doing this together in the morning or families that are sitting down. I know uh, we've really enjoyed it in our family. You know, tonight we were sitting around the dinner table and just going around and, and talking about the things. You know, I think as people go through the book uh, that we give them, they'll see that we're not avoiding issues that are things that are you know, not issues probably aren't the right word, but the things that are going on in the life of the church, right? Where we talk about the idea that we need to pray for how we give and being cheerful givers. We talk about mm-hmm. things like the land deal and that, that's happening and that we need to pray for those things because that's what the Bible tells us to do. That we're not supposed to go through life on our own and only seeking the Lord when things are going bad, but we need to be right. seeking him constantly. You know, we're praying for our missionaries. We're praying for the people that paved the way to get us here today, mm-hmm. both hundreds and thousands of years ago, but also the ones that have sat in these pews and made ABC what it is and, mm-hmm. and what a blessing that is that we get to inherit that. And so I really, I'm excited that we're, we're doing this. I think it's yep. going to be a great thing. When we hear these testimonies at the end uh, and really looking at where, where God's been working, where he is working now, where he's taking us in the future. Um, you know, I'm really excited about where we're going. Um, I was before this, but I think even more so these 21 days and just seeing what the Lord's going to use. Um, people's really giving stuff up and how, how he's going to uh, honor that. Yeah. And just a big reminder to everybody, those, uh, those books Pastor Forrest has written um, for the week that you can walk through as devotion for family worship, uh, for prayer. Uh, they'll all be available in the lobby. Uh, at our church, uh, every service, all throughout the week. People are picking them up all week, even on Wednesday nights during our midweek. And uh, we have special classes, special material for our Sunday morning groups and our small groups uh, throughout the week. And um, we, we have a lot of resources available. So all of this is leading up to February 11th to Heyday. We're at 9 a.m. Like Pastor Farr said, there'll be um, the testimony hour of fellowship where all the Sunday, Sunday morning groups will be meeting up in the sanctuary. All the kids will still have their Sunday school classes, but All the adults will be in there for testimony and for prayer. And then we will have one big jam-packed service together. Uh, Those kind of services that keep our building and maintenance crew up all night trying to figure out how we're going to get through fire codes. So it's a a wonderful time, and I can't wait. It's going to be a great um, kind of end to this 21-day prayer and fasting and a really a great beginning to the whole year. Absolutely. So thank you, Pastor Forrest. Appreciate you, brother. All right. All right.